What's up guys, Digital Ben here taking over Off the Books with BNS this week for a spooky Halloween spooktacular event. In this week's episode, we are taking a look back at the murder mystery series written by Beth Ann and Samantha, Partied to Death, where staff members here at the library play detectives and suspects in the murder case of victim Kirby Beckham. Can you guess who the killer is before the end? Enjoy this seven-part series, all rolled into one of the murder mystery podcast, Partied to Death. It was 1 a.m. when Detective Sanderson got to Holloway House. Death turned up in the middle of a Halloween bash. Sanderson walked into a madhouse. Bodies rushing past her did not deter her from the sight that laid ahead. A dead young man sprawled on the dance floor in some sick, low, and twisted dance of death that reeked of blood, vomit, and something slightly alchemical. Detective Sanderson manages to corral a few wailing, very shaken suspects. Who did it? We begin this dance, party to death. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Patricia Sanderson. You can call me Pat, and I'm the detective assigned to this case. When I got the call for this poor man, I thought the evidence would be straightforward. Unfortunately, we need to bring you all in for some help. My team has narrowed down the suspects to five people, and I have their case files right here with me. I will first give you an overview of what I saw walking in on the crime scene, and then give a general description of each suspect. You can determine for yourself who the culprit is when you hear their alibi firsthand. This is going to be a long and grueling case. Holloway House is your run-of-the-mill frat house, busted up, bachelorette's furniture with a hint of Mel B.O. waffling through the air. Tonight, that scent came with blood stains and something sharp smelling. Death is an odd thing. Murder is even an odder thing. Kirby Beckham, football prodigy, Beta Theta Phi legend, and straight A student can now add dead to his list of outstanding accomplishments. Kirby seemed like an unlikely victim, but there was malice in the way he went, and I'm here to find out who left him dancing his last days this way. Let me tell you about our motley crew of suspects. Suspect number one, Vicki Major, will be played by Stephanie of our adult and teen department. This suspect came to the party as a vampire. I guess she never left her goth face from high school. Genuinely kind, quiet, fiercely devoted, and obsessive. Our second suspect, Clancy Breyer, will be played by Matthew of our adult and teen department. This mummy is Vicky's best friend. He's shy, introverted, a psychology major at Hollow Ridge University, and very school and family focused. Justin from our adult and teen department will play suspect number three, Toby Marshall. Toby came as a farmer. He's the center for the Hollow Ridge football team, best friends with Kirby Beckham and part of Beta Theta Phi quiet and with a strong disposition. Aaron from our collection management department will play our fourth suspect, Caitlin Shelby. Well, hello, kitty cat. Caitlin's a Hollow Ridge University cheerleader and ultimate mean girl, on track to be the valedictorian, hated by all and loved by none. And our final suspect, Twyla Whitaker, will be played by Caitlin from our South Branch. This pink lady is an avid bookworm, eclectic, a loner, strong-willed, independent, scholarly, and she's the head of the chess and fencing club. Kirby Beckham, our victim, will be played by Brennan from our collection management department. Typical greaser, bad boy, life of the party, part of Beta Theta Phi fraternity, full ride scholarship for football to Hollow Ridge University, of course the quarterback, loved to be hated by everyone. He was unattainable. Party to death. After Detective Sanderson finds Beta Theta Phi fraternity brother Kirby Beckham dead on the dance floor at the annual Holloway House Halloween party, she and her officers round up the remaining suspects and bring them to the station for the start of the interrogations. First up for questioning and alibi is Vicki Major. Vicki, I have two questions for you. One, what time did you arrive at the party? And two, what were you doing when Kirby died? I swear I spent the whole night with Clancy. We never left each other's side. I picked him up at his place and then we showed up about an hour late to the party. I wasn't anywhere near that idiot jock. 
His good boy smile makes me want to puke. How can you be that handsome, that smart, and that good at grades? Some of us actually have to work hard in life to be something. So, you're saying he was too good to be true? Sounds to me like you're a little jealous. Did you want to get back at him for yourself or for someone else? I would never do this. I don't even really know the guy except for the fact that he was dating Caitlin. Like I said, pretty boy gets the pretty girl. I wonder if he even found out that she was actually a snake. I'm sorry. Could you repeat that? I said she was a snake. I won't sit here and lie to you. I came to to talk to her. Go on and tell the truth, Vicky. I'm not here to be your enemy. I just want justice for the dead man in the morgue. Why did you want to talk to Caitlin? I I know why I'm here. You don't think I was trying to get back at him? Well, you're wrong. He didn't do it. She did. I, I think I need my lawyer now. <sighs> so be it. Jefferson, get this girl her lawyer and bring me the next one. <sighs> This one doesn't seem so innocent. There's more going on here that she's willing to admit, and I don't know who this other girl is. Vicky is guilty. Guilty of what? I can't be so sure. Party to death. We move into our next interrogation. Will Vicky's hatred be the spark that ignites this two step of death? Will our next suspect be an extra entanglement of limbs in this slow step of murder? First off, what were you doing when Kirby died? Also, why don't you tell me about your relationship with Vicky? I know what you're getting at here, and all I can say is that I never even wanted to go to this dumb party. When Vicky called me, I couldn't miss the opportunity to help my friend. I was with my dad, helping him restock his truck when Vicky called me. I was surprised she even wanted to go to go herself. You know, parties aren't really our thing, you know. Did you leave the party at any time after you got there? How am I supposed to remember what I did every second of this party? There was a lot going on. It was really overwhelming. I just kept to myself. Went to the bathroom a few times and hung out with Vicky. I keep trying to tell you this wasn't my scene. I know I should have said no to her. Then why did you go if you were obviously so against it? Vicky was just trying to get me out of my shell, and she's been trying to break out and do new things. I don't understand why she needs all this validation from people. Who would want to be a Caitlin? Anyways, it just sucks that this was our first real party and taste of what it felt like to be cool and accepted. Of course, something had to ruin it. People like Kirby and Caitlin always ruin everything. Tell me more about why you think Vicky really wanted to go to this party. Did she know Kirby? Vicky know Kirby? <laughs> That's like oil and water. They just don't mix. People like us don't get along with people like them. That's what was really helping me get through the night. Vicky needed my support and I was going to give it to her, even if that meant holding her bag while she puked in the bathroom once or twice. Like I said, we obviously haven't been to many parties. I'll always have my Vicky's back, even if it doesn't make sense. Did you know anyone else at the party? I know Toby, but only because he works for my dad. He's a self-obsessed jock. I wonder why, how he's taking the loss. All he could ever talk about was Kirby. He could barely do his job. I swear Toby was Kirby's freaking shadow. How someone could love someone that much, I don't know. It was like Toby wanted to literally be Kirby. Maybe he, like, actually loved him. Thank you for your time, Clancy. I think it's time to talk to Toby. Party to death. Things are heating up in this dance of murder and mayhem. We interviewed a kind-hearted Clancy. Will his fierceness and loyalty to Vicky be his demise? Or will it secure his innocence in this tragic murder? Only time will tell. Toby, please have a seat. Can I ask why I'm being interrogated, Detective? I'm investigating five people for the murder of Kirby Beckham. This is just protocol. Toby, why did you go to the party? And are you in love with Kirby? What the heck, woman? Why would you say that? What did Clancy freaking say to you? I swear, I hate that kid. The only reason I work for his dad is to have spending money. Don't you know who I am? 
I'm a Hollow Ridge University football legend. I am in Beta Theta Pi. Don't you mean second place to the football star legend, Kirby? Don't you mean was? That's quite an odd thing to say about someone whose life you seem to be pretty involved in and obsessed with. Care to explain? Look, I barely even made it to the party in time. I was supposed to drop the work truck off at Briars, but I was running an hour late. I just decided to borrow the truck for a few hours. Fancy Clancy and his daddy won't mind. So, are you saying that you did not arrive until after Kirby was already dead? No, I mean, I was on the dance floor with one of the cheerleaders. So what were you doing on the dance floor when Kirby died? I was scoping the scene. What can I say? I am a people watcher. Look, I was just looking out for my boy Kirby. I know how Caitlin Shelby can be. She is just like her brother. Crazy. Why would Kirby need someone to watch out for Caitlin? Caitlin is bitter that Kirby ended things. Like I said, she is crazy. Even heard that she's been sitting outside the frat house for the past couple weeks just to talk to Kirby. He's been avoiding her like the plague. That girl is fake. She could put on a great show for anyone that will watch. For example? Just before Kirby's accident, I saw Caitlin shove Vicky Major and yell in her face to pour her a drink. And Vicky, that idiot, went ahead and did it for her. After Vicky came back and handed Caitlin her drink, Caitlin spit on Vicky right in front of everyone and just walked away. Accident? You talk as if Kirby's death wasn't murder. We found traces of rat poison in Kirby's blood. Wasn't it you that drove the past truck to the party? And now doesn't that make you the best of the best, the legend, now that Kirby's dead? Dude, dude, you have this all wrong. It has to be Caitlin. Convince me then. Dude, she is a chem major. After she got the drink, it looked like she went straight to the bathroom. Doesn't that give her enough time to put poison in that drink? She is crafty, man. Just tell me you were jealous, Toby. Jealous of Kirby. Get away from me with that talk, man. Kirby was the best. I shouldn't feel ashamed for being his best man. Face it, you were living in his shadow. He always beat you. He got the girls. He was the quarterback. He didn't have to work for spending money like you do. So what? I was trying to be the best, and maybe it was a fight at the top. I was trying to claw my way there, and now I finally am, and I don't feel bad. I have the position, and now maybe I'll even get his girl Twyla. She won't be my secret. Get out of my face. Jefferson, bring in the mean girl, please. I think we have a lot to discuss. Party to death. This is where things start getting interesting. (laughs) So, the girl of the hour. You need some tissues? Of course I'm the girl of the hour. How could this have happened so tragically to my Kirby? Your Kirby? What do you mean by your Kirby? He's my boyfriend. What do you think I would call him? Uh, I'm not sure if I'm understanding this correctly. What do you mean you don't understand, idiot? We are two people in love. He is mine and now he's dead. (laughs) Miss Shelby, please do not refer to me as an idiot. I'm the one in charge here. It was my understanding that you and Mr. Beckham were no longer a couple. Is that not correct? Of course we were a couple. He was just going through a rough time and I was just trying to be there for him. Oh, Caitlin. Now, what were you doing at the time of Kirby's death? I was standing right there. I was right beside him. He was confused and I was just trying to help him, but Twyla kept getting in the way and putting lies into his brain. Cut the crap, Caitlin. Twyla and Kirby were together and you know it. How could I have not seen this coming? How dare you make me admit that Kirby would leave me, of all people, for her? What a subpar girl. I'm everything. I'm smart, beautiful, popular, a cheerleader. I didn't want to admit it to myself. I just wanted to fix things before it got around that we were over. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. What did you put in his drink, Caitlin? I didn't put anything in his drink. All I did was hand him the drink. I was just trying to mend our broken relationship. That's all, I swear. You went into the bathroom with his drink. That was more than enough time to pour in the poison. Don't you think? You are a smart girl, a chemistry major. Or are you gonna deny that too? Nice try, but I handed the drink to Twyla before I walked into the bathroom. For all I know, she was framing me. She was always jealous of everything that I had. I can't help it if she was trying to punish me by taking Kirby away for good. Stupid girl. And they had to show up in matching costumes too. Come on, a greaser and a pink lady, are you kidding me? Kirby and I would have done way better. Okay, we're done here. Jefferson, bring in the next suspect. I wonder if her jealousy of Kirby and Twyla was enough to commit such a horrific crime. Party to death.
Will this next interview shed light on Caitlin's devious ways? Or will Twyla reveal herself the ultimate killer? Welcome back to Party to Death, Episode 6. Twyla, just the girl I wanted to talk to. Hopefully, you can wrap this case up in a pretty little bow for me. But first things first, what were you doing the moment that Kirby died? I just... I can't believe he's gone. Twyla, I know you're upset, but we need to confirm your innocence in this case. Unless you have something to hide. (sighs) No, I'm tired of hiding things. The only reason I went to this stupid party is because I thought Kirby was going to tell everyone about us. We even had on matching costumes, and he still couldn't manage to tell anyone. Caitlin found out just by looking at us, but what did he expect? She's crazy. What do you mean by crazy? How can you trust and be with someone for three years who did something so horrible to their own cousin? Cousin? What are you referring to? Vicky and Caitlin, of course. They're cousins. That horrible girl pulled a prank on Vicky. Actually, I don't even know how I can call it a prank. What she did was horrible. She basically maimed her. Can you tell me exactly what happened? Caitlin buddied up to Vicky for about two weeks, just so she could invite her to a slumber party and pull off this god-awful feat. I thought it was so weird that they were talking. They've never gotten along. I should have known Caitlin was planning something awful. Who planned something for two weeks just to humiliate someone? Anyway, Caitlin invited Vicky to a sleepover and shaved her head in the middle of the night. She got it right down to the middle when Vicky woke up screaming, but it was too late. All of the girls were laughing and Vicky's hair was unsalvageable. She basically attacked Vicky with hair clippers. So what does this say about Vicky to you? It says that she should have gotten back at Caitlin. When I went to talk to Vicky at the party, she laughed and joked about how she was going to put liquid laxative in Caitlin's drink. Not enough to hurt her, but just enough to make her stay in the bathroom the entire night. Or crap her pants in public. Whatever came first. (laughs) Is there anything else you want to tell me? She should have gotten Clancy in on it. He's pretty loyal to Vicky. I thought it was so sweet when he held her stuff for her while she was getting sick in the bathroom. I saw him go out the back door for some fresh air, but I can't say I blame him. It's hard to be mixed in a group of people who don't think you are worth anything. You still haven't told me what you were doing when Kirby died. I'm sorry. It's just, it's hard to talk about. After Caitlin and I walked up to Kirby, Caitlin handed Kirby a drink and immediately started making a scene about betrayal. Kirby was exasperated and turned around and took a big swig of a drink. Caitlin stormed off and a few minutes later he started not to feel so hot. I asked him if he wanted to go home and he said no. A promise is a promise. Just a few seconds after that he he collapsed to the floor. That witch killed him. She did it just to spite me and win some sick game. She'd probably been planning it just as she planned everything out for Vicky. She's a psychopath. Well, thank you for your time. I think you need to take a break now. Party to death. You've heard all the interrogations. Were you able to discover our killer? Detective Sanderson has. Tune in as she identifies our killer. Bring him in. It was hard to figure out, but in the end, everything points back to you. He wasn't the only one you wanted dead, though, was he? (laughs) It wasn't in my plans to kill Kirby, but if it hurt Caitlin even half as bad as I wanted to, well, then it was a little bit worth it, wasn't it? Tell me everything from the beginning. Detective, do you have a helpless friend? Why do you ask? Vicky is my helpless friend, and I am tired of being surrounded by helpless people. What exactly do you mean by that? Caitlin caused my dad a lot of trouble, you know. She claimed he made a lot of advances on her, when in reality, she called because her house had a roach infestation, and she did not want that getting around. I mean, how embarrassing, right? So anyway, she diverted the attention to my dad, and made it sound like he made a lot of advances towards her. The business took a dive. We were devastated. I mean, why do you think me and Toby are the only employees? It's funny how quick-tongued pretty girls get whatever they want. 
My dad was an honest working man, and in one lie, she destroyed him and embarrassed our whole family. The tipping point was when I found out what Caitlin did to Vicky. Vicky was so naive going to that party. She should have never believed that snake. I told her not to go. She didn't listen to me, and that's when I knew I had to get rid of her for everyone's sake, even for Kirby's sake. I could see that idiot was trying to make himself a better man by leaving her for Twyla. I thought he was growing up. It's a shame he had to be the only one to die. But you know, Caitlin, she ruins everything. Even her own death. Go on, tell me more. Well, when Vicky called me about the party and told me she had plans to put a laxative in Caitlin's drink, I was all about it. I was going to support my friend no matter what. What she didn't know is that I was going to help her just a bit more. When we got to the party, I waited for Toby to arrive. I excused myself to go to the bathroom and snuck out the bathroom window to the truck to get what I needed. I couldn't have it lead back to my dad, so I thought Toby might take the fall. The perfect opportunity came when Vicky threw me her bag and started vomiting, probably from the anxiety of what she was going to do to Caitlin. And Vicky freaks out about everything. I, that's why I had to help. I switched out the liquid laxative for the poison at that moment. It was so perfect. No one even knew. Then after that, it was like magic. Everything fell into place. I just didn't account that Caitlin would force Vicky to pour the drink so she could take it to Kirby. Apparently someone decided to be designated driver that night, which was unfortunate for Kirby. Even though it didn't work out as planned, I am pretty pleased with the outcome because I finally got Caitlin back. It's still a shame that we didn't get to see the blood roll out of her mouth and eyes. Oh well. <laughs> <sighs> Jefferson, just take him away. We're done here. Thank you for joining us for this shocking reveal. Did you guess correctly? Or did this dance with death have you two-stepping and second-guessing? This concludes our broadcast of Party to Death.